Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this quick video I'm going to show you how it's possible to use two different ready receivers on a single drone using Betaflight or any of its variants. Initially I wanted to use this method in order to test the TBS tracer system, so the plan was to mount the Tracer Micro TX on the external model bay of the Tango 2, but unfortunately due to power limitations it's not possible to power both internal and external models simultaneously. So while I wasn't able to use this method when testing the tracer system, and it's probably not going to be relevant to most of you, I still think that this method is pretty cool, so I decided to show you how it's done. The secret behind the trick is actually pretty simple. First of all, I'm using two flight controllers that feature a built-in VTX switch and set both to 5 volts. Each radio receiver is powered using the pads, which are originally designed to power the video transmitter. Both radio receivers are connected to the same UART port on the main flight controller, and from the main flight controller, the RX pad is wired to the RX pad on the secondary flight controller. Then on both radio systems, we need to assign the same auxiliary switch to turn on or off the radio receiver. So when one radio receiver is going to be turned on, the second one is going to be turned off, and vice versa. Now as you can see, the quadcopter and both radio systems are powered up. The Crossfire Nano Receiver is turned on, but the Tracer Nano Receiver is turned off, and after flipping this auxiliary switch, the Tracer Nano is turned on, and the Crossfire Nano is turned off. Now let's reverse the process, so I'm going to click this auxiliary switch on the Tango 2, and flip the switch on the TX16S. Telemetry recovered. So again, now the Crossfire Nano Receiver is turned on, and the Tracer Nano Receiver is turned off. As for Betaflight configuration, the user one mode, which in this particular case controls the VTX switch on both flight controllers, needs to be configured so when the VTX power switch is going to be turned on on the main flight controller, it is going to be turned off on the secondary one, and vice versa. Now let me show you again how it works, so I've got the quadcopter powered up and both radio systems are turned on, and here you can see how the operation is done while monitoring the radio channels on Betaflight. One important aspect, which is only applicable in case you are going to use two radio controllers, is that before switching between the radio controllers, pay attention that the auxiliary switch on the secondary device is set accordingly. So for example, if these two switches are set to control the VTX power switches, before switching this one, make sure that this one is pressed, as otherwise we are going to enter a ping pong game between the two receivers. In case you're going to use a single radio system, however, this is not going to be an issue. So overall, I think that this method might be a good option for adding a radio redundancy system, and for wireless training purposes, I don't recommend it, as there are other better options. Anyway, I thank you for watching this quick video, I hope it was informative enough, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. I wish you all happy flying, and see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye. Thank you.